everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and as you can see on the table today, we have ISS Vanguard. This comes from Awaken Realms, and the second I pulled this thing out of the box, I was quite shocked at how beautiful the box is, even now in its prototype demo form. But just be aware, everything you're about to see in this unboxing, just before we move into a Kickstarter preview series for the game, is definitely in prototype form, as much and as good as this is likely to look and I can tell you right now I haven't even opened the box yet so I have no idea what I'm running into once I actually dig into it. The only thing I have done is opened up the separate ship book. And this ship book that comes along with it is likely, I'm guessing, to be renamed Ship Log. I wouldn't be surprised. There's probably a lot of people that have already mentioned that or will mention that when they see this. But again, remember, everything's prototype here, all subject to change. I'm gonna tell you right now what you're about to see inside this ship book is really, really nice. So let's go ahead and take a look at that first and then we'll dive into the box. So we'll go ahead and open this thing up. As you can see on one side of the ship book is actually dials. So we have an assembly dial here and you can see you can actually turn that to set it. You have a manufacturing dial, a science dial. You also have dials inside of dials for research, morale inside of response and generators inside of energy. Pretty cool to track them right inside this binder. Talks about the ship book itself and how this actually works. Has a glossary of ship terms all laid out. And you've got your arrival here. And we'll just show you a few of the very interesting uh, pockets for each of the cards that are come inside the game. And gotta let you know up front, again, I haven't played this, so I can't explain half of what I'm seeing here. It's really just my own excitement, along with likely yours and seeing this for the first time. Procedure and the full rules are mentioned here and how to use this, which I again have not looked at, but you can feel free to pause the screen and do that yourself. We got the awaiting cards over here. So active situations, I guess, would sit in these areas. That's pretty awesome. This is gonna be a completely different way to house your ship inventory worth of uh, items and accessories that you're gonna add into your ship log. That's just really cool. And I hope this is done as well as it looks. Debriefing here, the procedure, dividing your crew duties or bid for them, apply shipwide bonuses, full rules for that down below. Then you can see we have a unique area here for each discovery and they're all numbered. Mission archives are next. This has planetary information, the different sectors all divided up. Again, there's some rules on this. A lot more places to discover. The med bay is next. The artwork, by the way, in the game is phenomenal. Uh, we've already seen a lot of this dropping inside the Facebook group for ISS Vanguard. If you have not joined that group, definitely recommend you do because you will see updates coming out all the time and even during the Kickstarter and afterwards as well. Um, they show up or they show artwork there all the time and it's fantastic uh, and then you've got a whole bunch of thing here of course being that it's the uh, med bay you've got injuries so light injuries moderate and critical all located on this side your memorial wall and the procedure and full rules of how that works I'm loving these dials over here. I think this is a fantastic idea. Again, these are prototype forms, so they're not sticking in place all too well, but I know that the final version, they're gonna be a lot better, but this is just really cool to have these just attached in within the binder, plus making space of an area in the binder that honestly usually doesn't have anything going on for it. That's really smart design, I like that. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and move on past the memorial area here. Again, we get into some quick save. We have the bridge, so choosing your next destination and allocating the available energy. So essentially the bridge and where you want to go in this world. So you got the procedure here laid out for all this, the full rules for that, your systems over here on the far right hand side, the outbound systems. This is just crazy, like nuts. So it says it's the current system, system A. And then you've got a whole bunch of issues here. And the thing you have to remember too, being that this is the prototype and the demo, um, again, what you're seeing here is a snippet of everything, right? You're not seeing the full package. So more of this to come likely in the Kickstarter and bolstering of what you're about to see here being that this is a very filtered, uh, you know, ex experience uh, for this game uh, for a prototype form. So it's going to be exciting to see what the Kickstarter has in store to really just 
add to all of this. Situation runes solving dangerous situations and internal conflicts that threaten Vanguard's mission. We'll go ahead and take a look at that. Again, nothing in here just yet, but you guys can still check out the rules if you want. Pause in the screen and read them. Might give you some uh, un understanding of what each of these different sections are. And I'll be pouring over these in intent detail very, very soon. Research laboratory. So, of course, progress, research, and reveal more of the research tree that you're dealing with. So the rules and procedure for that as well. And then you've got all these pockets for all this stuff, all the different research projects that are going on. It's crazy. So analyzing the message, builder's landmark, extreme biome survival, alien material samples, all kinds of stuff. Manufacturing complex, manage the ship's production. So we got production upgrades, different stages of where they're at in their production, the rules and full procedures for that as well. Here we have a couple cards that are sliding out of their slots just now, but we'll put them right back in. And we got the hangar. So let's build and modify new landers. What is inside the hangar? Oh, that's kind of cool. So we got ourselves like a blueprint section here. So procedure, storing your lander and the full rules for that laid out. And then you've got these blueprints way up here in the top. I'll bring them a little closer so you guys can actually see them. Got some completed modules over here. Space Ranger over here. This is pretty cool. Now, I'll just orientate this so you guys can see it. So we got the heavy cargo, medium cargo, light cargo for the bays. Uh, and then, of course, we have our emergency evac system, armor sensors, agility, some empty slots for our ships. This is quite interesting. All new to me, hangar bay number two, the barracks. So we'll go ahead and move this through. Now these were actually just separate sheets that said hangar bay number two and three. So maybe when you have a larger ship, you can have uh, more ships within. Uh, I'm not too sure, we'll find out. Uh, the barracks, return your crew to their quarters and assign them to work. Here is the procedure and full rules breakdown for that particular section. And you've got your ship duties, uh, you've got manufacturing, flight testing, generators, executive officer, living quarters, all kinds of stuff. And then at the very bottom here, you have some training as well. And we're actually near the very end of this binder. I really wanted to show all this off to you guys. Uh, we got the resting happening all in the back here. And then the full rules here, this is resolved by the supervisor, it says. So mission preparations, save your game or set up a next mission and how to do that. There's tabs for each of these too, by the way, to make it a lot easier to pull over. We have the mission launch procedure. So this is gonna break down how that works. There's a number of steps, about six of them in total. And then over here we have planetary exploration procedure and how that works. So these are good references you're definitely going to want to be checking out. And Adrift. Oh, procedure for that. Uh, resolved by everyone. Yes. And I think that's going to actually do it. That is going to cover the entirety of the binder. So I'll just pull this last page over. We'll see if there's anything else left inside of the book on the back here. Nope, that is it. But again, as I mentioned earlier, the actual insides of this binder are fantastic. Like, again, when you're talking about a prototype, most prototypes are really rough around the edges in terms of how they look and feel. And just looking at the shipbook alone, not even diving into the box yet, I'm already gunning to see how this game actually operates. Uh, the idea of keeping your entire ship in a binder is extremely awesome. Now, just before we go ahead and dive into the gigantic box for this prototype, I want to give you an overview of what this game is all about for those of you that are unfamiliar with it or hearing about it for the very first time. It's a one to four player cooperative campaign board game. It's gonna bring players right into an epic sci-fi adventure as they play as four sections, security, recon, science, and engineering on board first, the first human ship with possibility to reach outer space. The campaign it's gonna introduce unique stories. They're gonna have hard player choices to make, very similar to Tainted Grail with a story written by the same individual. Twists and branching storylines are gonna be in there. The gameplay is divided into two main stages, the ship phase and landing on the planets themselves. During the ship phase, the players are gonna manage their ship within the binder, which we just saw in all those printed sleeves, and where every section will have to make gameplay decisions, such as healing your wounds for your crew, deciding what galaxy to go to next, 
contracts, building ship upgrades, researching, finding discoveries, uh, manufacturing new equipment, uh, hiring new crew members, delegating your crew for different jobs or training. There's all kinds of stuff. A lot of that's tracked in that ship book or log, as I like to call it. And you have the whole managing of the dangerous situations on board, of course. Then after that, you're going to prepare your crew for landing on the next planet and in search of answers to humanity's biggest questions. Together, you will pick lander and customize it with modules. Then each section will choose a crew member to take on a mission. More experienced crew members will have better ranks. You'll have some deck building going on with the skills deck. You're gonna have to take equipment and choose dice in the game for your character. The game's gonna come with over 100 different crew members. They're gonna each have their own unique characteristics. After landing on the planet, characters will proceed with exploring them by using dice management combined with action cards and special equipment. Planets will be represented by two pages in the planet book and consists of points of interest where players will be able to perform actions in order to take samples, discover new minerals, or some alien technology there. But obviously those alien planets in general are full of hazards from environmental weather and less advanced living forms. Each planet will have its own mission to complete and as a side objective players will try to gather discoveries used on the ship and rank up their characters by fulfilling their side missions. During all phases of the games, players will be directed to the logbook consisting of story encounters often written in the form of action-packed dialogues between the characters. So that is the essence of ISS Vanguard. It is a open world epic campaign game and it's out there for you to explore and that's exactly what I plan to do using this prototype demo for you guys to help you get a good feel as to what this thing plays like. So let's go ahead and take that lid off and find out what we've got inside. So the first thing we got to mention here is something that really just states start here. So this is going to be for me to really go through about the required documents, the app support, other information I need to know in order to get moving in this prototype. The next thing we're going to see, and this is where it gets real fun because I've never opened this box, nor do I understand anything about what's inside of it. Uh, I have no idea what I'm even going to run into here, except I've just found a zippered bag full of a bunch of stuff that says tutorial. So I do understand that there is a tutorial mission inside of this. How However, the tutorial mission is for my purposes, for me to get more familiar with the game itself. So what you guys will be seeing in the Kickstarter preview, from my understanding, will be the mission after that. It will not be the tutorial scenario. So this is more so for me to get accustomed to the game. So we'll put those to the side. We've got next this, ooh, this is that uh, book that we were they were talking about earlier on. So this is all about the uh, plan of uh, Planetopedia. Am I saying that correctly? Probably not. Uh, contains four prototype planet boards. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just take a quick look at this. So here is one of the different planets that we can check out. That's pretty amazing. So it's uh, got all these points of interest everywhere from my understanding. We've got this one here. They've got code names up in the top left hand corner as well and they also talk and have some descriptions as to what's going on here plus these actual pictures in different locations too. There's some unique discoveries and missions and events that can happen on the sides. Very interesting. We'll move this back over so you guys can see the opposite side of this. Very intriguing indeed. Oh, there's a sharp change in color. I like that. The code name Brimstone. Volcanic uh, volcanic surface. Awesome. And I don't think that I think that was it for the uh, for the planet book. So we'll move past that. We've got a card in here that's floating. I'll have to figure out where that goes later on. Uh, so next up we have this bag worth of information. So these are different systems. So let's just go through these at a high level here. So the first one we have here is uh, System C. We have System B, which is considered dangerous. System D. System E. All these different systems you can travel to. It's nuts. E2. And then if we flip this over to the opposite side, we actually have some ships here. The Space Ranger. The Dragonfly. the pelican, and finally, this beast. 
Next up inside the box, we have the ISS Vanguard Logbook. Now, this is going to have a lot of stuff that definitely runs into spoiler territory, but there's a whole bunch of pages just in this one alone. This is probably at least, I'd say, 8 to 10 pages worth of stuff, and it looks like they're uh, double-sided as well. Uh, so there's a lot there, and we will be seeing more about that later on. I'm not going to spoil anything else from that one, because that is likely going to move into our... Well, we'll see a lot of that maybe in the playthrough itself. Next up we have, I have no idea, something that is in bubble wrap. This is going to be a very raw unboxing, very different than what you're used to on the channel. Uh, but you know what? It's fun to do these every so often, especially with uh, prototypes that are of as high quality uh, as this one appears to be. Um, so we've got a package here that I need to actually open up. I'm going to try to do this without tearing it too badly. I managed to pull that off pretty good. And inside, ooh, this is quite nice. So these are like uh, recessed boards, which are very fancy. So you can see here we have the engineering section. So the dice can actually sit inside each of these different spots, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, you've got all this is recessed. Everything here for charges. Uh, that's very interesting. Injuries along the bottom. Got your security station here. Got your recon section. And finally, your science section. Now, as you can see from this point on, we're talking about components. We've got a lot of different wooden encased areas with cards in them. We've got some miniatures, more cards, dice. We've got cubes. We've got all kinds of stuff. So the easiest way to do this is I'm going to go ahead and bring this up a little bit closer so you can, I can go through each of these components individually. We have some purple gems and some red cubes in the box. And a whole bunch of these yellow dice. No idea what the icons mean just yet, but the quality of them is very nice. Wow, I don't even know how to describe these dice. They are like partially translucent, like they're not completely see-through. They have this really weird color pattern to them, but the other thing too is they're super heavy. Like they have way more weight than a typical die does. I guess the best way to actually compare this to the other ones I just showed you in yellow is this right here. I'll do a drop test on the box and you'll hear the difference in sound. That's about the only way I can make this work. So here is the yellow die. And here is the blue die. Do you hear that weight difference? It's like a thud when it drops. Like the quality of these dice right here are off the charts. Like they just feel like you're holding metal in your hand. And not only do you get them in blue, you also have them in green as well, doing something completely different. This looks like these each likely tie to the four different boards we talked about earlier. Maybe this one pertains to science. That's just a guess. And more of the dice, this time in red, again, with very different sides going on here. So I'm really intrigued to find out what these three sets are all about, including the yellow set, which is a total of four. The game also comes with two different D10s, as well as a D8. And this D8 is quite interesting in terms of the different uh, icons on it and around it. And you can see this is a standard D10, whereas this one is definitely a custom D10 and has some very interesting icons across it. Next up, we have some tokens, and these have two sides, depending on how you're using them, whether it's turn completed or turn available. Uh, these ones right here, for instance, have a difference on the back here. Janitorial supervisor, for instance, used for cleanup, and then a failed mission token. Now we're going to go through some of the mini cards. Here's some rank up cards, and there's a whole bunch of them. I'll flip them over and take a closer look. One thing to note is even in the prototype, there are dividers for the mini cards. That's extremely handy. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take a look at this pack. There's a whole bunch, actually. So these ones are strange. Uh, you got the alien tech uh, discoveries. You have uh, live specimen discoveries, uh, microorganism discoveries, as well as mineral discoveries. So a whole bunch there as we go through them, starting with mineral. Again, the artwork in the game is awesome. Even on these small mini cards, just the artwork alone draws you in. It's very vibrant, very bright, and very sci-fi, and I love it.
Next up, we have the blueprints. And as you can see down here, it says, do not reveal until the card is assembled. So I'm not going to flip it over to the other side, but I'll just show you the front side of these different blueprints. Next up are the leads. These are broken up into different colors. You can see here we got green, we have blue, we have yellow, and at the back we have brown. Go through these quite quickly. Your typical junk. Try my best not to cover up what's on the card, but that may be difficult, so I'm not sure where the text is going to actually land here. Next up, we have a deck of injury cards. We definitely don't want to see those, uh, but we'll just take a quick look at these. There are a bunch of duplicates as well. So we got a bunch of wound ones, for instance. We have critical wounds. There's obviously differences in the iconography that show up and also some kind of status type things like shocked, panicked, blinded, exhaustion, for instance. All the wonderful things that can happen out in space to you. Burnt, suit damage. And last but not least, it wouldn't be space without some hazards. So there's a whole bunch of those in here as well. Flip these over. This card tray that we just went through is called Card Tray B and houses a whole bunch of small cards. We've gone through each of these. You'll see again the dividers. Inside those small cards, there were also some unique discoveries, but I'm going to keep these ones hidden as they are likely spoiler material. Next, let's check out Card Tray A, Planetary Exploration. And you can see there's not a ton of cards in here, but they're all divided up. This set of standard size cards is all about missions. All right, let's go through these. So I'm gonna number them. Some of them have setup instructions right on the front as well, as you'll see as we go through these. And some of them don't. Flip them over real quick. Take a quick look at some of these missions. Feel free to pause the screen if you wanna see more or read more. Next up, we have events. So we'll go through these. There's a handful of those as well, with some setup on the front of a few of them. So here's an example of one of the events. Another event here. Earthquakes, gusts of wind, dust storms. Next pack of cards to go through is the points of interest. So you can see the backs of these, they are all the same. Flipping them over to the opposite side, these will not be the same most likely as I go through here. I'll try my best again to avoid putting my finger in the wrong spot, but that might be difficult. We'll see. It'll at least be blocking up the artwork. But there's all kinds of points of interest inside of this game. And beautiful artwork on each of these cards as well.
Now we're going to take a break from the cards here and take a look at one of the miniatures that came inside the box. Look at the detail on this thing. It, it craziness. There's tiny, tiny specks of detail there on each individual part of this thing. It's awesome. And I hope it's really showing up on camera as well as it looks in front of me. I'll try to keep this as still as possible so you can kind of take in that detail. It's pretty insane. I'll flip it around to the back side so you can see this as well. Now, one thing that did happen as part of transit, I believe, is that back piece right there with the green, it did come separated. So I will be re-gluing that back on, but that's about it. It's a beautiful, beautiful miniature. This is the tray that the miniature was inside of, and you can see here a bunch of the different dividers. There are a few cards in here that we should probably go through. A few cards at the very front. Again, I have no idea what these are for just yet, but I will be finding out soon enough. These right here are the ship upgrades, so I'm not going to flip it over to the other side. We'll see some of this when we go through the playthrough. Basically, these are, again, upgrades you can do to your ship. So we've got things like quantum networks, advanced star maps, vindicator cannon, power storage module, reinforced hull. Again, to avoid spoilers, I won't show you the back of this one, but these are ship situations that you can run into. So builder's cults, for instance, or intersectional games, food shortages that can happen, illegal power diversion, outbreaks and chamber malfunctions. There's a few research projects in this one, so you can see crystal shards, improved landers one, and biosensors. Couple production projects, we have the Vindicator Cannon and the Specialized Section Armor. Now we're moving along into the crew members. These are of interest for sure. So all these different crew members inside of the game, at least in this prototype version so far. Next, we have some equipment cards to go through. These are much smaller than anything we've looked at so far. So we've got supplies here, whole bunch of them. Last but not least for this tray, some more equipment cards. We'll flip these over. We've got heavy mining laser, drones, android bodyguard, some med kits, a hazmat suit, construction arm, a jet pack, Medivac drone, biosensors array, dehydrated supplies, another sensor suit, jetpacks, scout craft, portable lab, sounds pretty nice, thermonuclear bomb, universal solvent, breaching charge, early warning system, outpost, still suit, med bay, heavy suit, defense system, and the hazmat suit. Now let's check out more miniatures, or at least the rest of them in the box. And again, you're not going to be surprised here that the quality of these things are off the charts. Even in prototype form, they look absolutely awesome. So I'll just go ahead and rotate this. You can see it from all angles. Now you'll notice the base of these last two miniatures I just showed you are yellow. So I don't know if this is a souped up version of the first miniature, the same character or not. That may be something in the game I'll have to look into a little further, but being that the colors match, I'm guessing that's the case. And I have three more sets of three different colors. Purple is the next one up. Again, an awesome pose. All kinds of stuff going on there on the base, which I love when miniatures actually have something lively going on on the base of the miniature. Just adds so much more to the pose. And the second one for the purple. This pose is absolutely awesome. This is the first of the blue. There's another one to come. Like, look at the detail on that base. Look at all the different rocks or whatever the heck he is standing on. And he's got himself a, I don't know what that is. But it's absolutely beautiful.
Last but not least, we have this light blue color. Again, with another epic looking pose. The wind blowing there. That's pretty sweet. Just crazy details on this thing. Finally, the last four things inside the box are one box specific to each of the four major areas here. So we got Recon, Engineering, Security, and Science. We'll see each of them one at a time. I'll go ahead and open up Engineering first. Inside the box was a mixture of dice. Now this is for the engineer. The engineer is yellow, so that would correspond to the very first miniature that you guys saw me go through a few seconds ago. Mining probe, med kit, and biomass fabricator are the equipment for the engineer. Here is the action deck for the engineer. We'll flip it over to the opposite side to see each of the different cards. These cards are considered the advanced actions. We'll go ahead and show you some of these. Again, these are all specific to the engineer. The two crew members. And finally, some upgrade sleeves, as you can see here. Here are the dice that relate and come right out of the box for the Recon individual. Recon is pink. Just so you're aware, when I talked about the upgrade sleeves just a second ago for the Engineer, those were considered rank sleeves. Just so you're aware. So these are the dice that come specific for the Recon. Next, we're going to go through the cards. Equipment for the Recon. Zip lines and med kits, along with live streaming rig. Time for the action deck. Let's flip this over, see what we have. Next up are the advanced actions. Here are two members that associate themselves with Recon and rank up sleeves over here as well. Next, we have some dice for the science character. Equipment includes med kits, portable AI, stimulants, and a mobile containment system. Action cards for the scientist. and also the advanced action cards as well. Science crew members and rank up sleeves as well. Last but certainly not least is security and the dice for this one. Equipment cards are the adrenaline shot and the med kit. Action cards for this one. Quick thinking, resourceful, stubborn. All of these ones are the same base cards across the different ones with a few differences across them as you've seen. And once you get into the advanced action cards like this pile right here, they become more specific to the actual character in question. The two crew members. And finally, the rank up sleeves for this role. And that's going to do it. You have essentially seen everything inside the ISS Vanguard prototype demo box as well as the ship log or book. 
I hope this gives you a really good idea as to all the components that came in the prototype, uh, just in case during the playthrough we only get to see a handful of them. I will be very interested to see how much of this is used when we move into our adventure. I'll be going through the tutorial myself to get used to the rules, and then we'll be diving into a Kickstarter series. So I really hope you'll join me. If you're not subscribed to the channel, definitely subscribe so that you can be aware of when that video lands. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo!